Hello to everyone. Thank you all for joining me at this time. My name is Shabi Zane, and I'm coming on to first discuss with you all a dream that I had recently. It was actually two different dreams that I had back to back, one uh, the night before last and the other last night. And I want to also pull some cards to see what spiritual gifts do you all possess and how you can utilize them in different areas of your life. Um, and be sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you find that this message resonates with you. If you, if you desire a personal reading, feel free to email me. My email will be in the description box. Okay, so let's get right into it. So the first dream that I had, uh, night before last, um, I had actually ended up meeting up with someone. I ran into someone actually who I was friends with in middle school. And this person, we ended up having conversation, you know, just about... Uh, general things, how life was going or whatnot. And we ended up passing by this big body of water. It looked like it was more like a pond. And I ended up jumping into this water. And they jumped in too. And I pulled out huge wads of money. And I started throwing it all over the water. I was literally just swimming in the money. And this old friend of mine was looking at me like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that with the money? And so they asked me like, why are you throwing the money all in the water? Aren't you concerned it's going to get wet and ruined? And I told them, I was like, it's a lot more where this came from. So I'm not worried. And so I woke up from that dream. Then I ended up last night, this dream was very interesting for me because I was outside and I was minding my business. I was literally levitating. Okay. I was in the air, I wasn't like in a flying position. I was literally like in a sit in a sitting position, but I was using my feet like I was paddling my feet like I was in water, but I was literally in the air um, to keep myself high, you know, without you know coming back down to ground level. And so I was doing this while I was sun gazing, but I found that I was being disrupted because there was a lot of people that started to gather around me while they watched me, you know, levitating in the air, sun gazing. And so a lot of them, they was just amazed and like, oh my goodness, I can't believe she's doing this. And so there was this European man who came up and apparently he was well known by these people for like being a talent scout or whatever you call him. And he had like... um connections to the news stations. And so they started calling on him and they told him to come over and see me. And he looked so angry and they was like, can you just put her on the news? You know, she needs to be on the news. Look at what she's doing. And his response was, um, excuse my French, but this is what he said. He was like, hell no, I'm not putting no N-I-G-G-A on the news. No one has any business seeing her doing this because she shouldn't be doing it anyway. So I just continued to do what I was doing. And I ended up coming back into my home in this dream. And my two youngest, uh, my two twins, actually, my, my son, who's a twin, he got up because I told them about what happened. And he was like, I can do it too. He literally started levitating in the corner of the room. And so his twin sister ran over and was like, me too. And she started levitating. But the rest of my children, they was not able to do it. They was trying to figure out how they did it. And then I woke up. Okay. So I see this. And the crazy part about that second dream that I just told you all about is that when I woke up, I literally felt like I was fully capable of doing that in the physical realm, in the 3D. Like it, it felt so familiar, like I had done it a million times before, okay? When I started thinking back on a dream, it was like, I know I can do that. I know I can do that. I, I've done that before. You know, it was one of those just feelings of knowing, um, which was really interesting because I felt that way for quite a few hours after waking up. Um, so what I feel is that I tapped in more so into another dimension, another realm in terms of my own personal existence. Because as you all know, we are multidimensional beings, meaning we don't just exist on this physical plane. There's a spiritual nature to us. You know, we have a spirit, we have a soul. And so we are expansive. But a lot of times, depending on how conditioned you are, 
and how inauthentic you are to who you were organically, you know, who you were naturally created to be in your organic state, you can be very far removed from those many multiple facets of your existence, okay? And so because of that, even in your dream state, you might stay on base level when it comes to tapping into what exists out there, you know, in the other dimensions. That's not the case for everybody, but it can certainly be the case for many. Um, and so I found that this dream actually allowed me to tap into another aspect of who I am and what I do. Because I feel like, like I said, this is something that the levitating part in the sky is like something that I do. Like I've been doing this, but obviously in another realm, on, on another dimension, um, another dimensional plane. And so um, I do want to pull some cards because I'm curious to see, I'm sure that many of you are curious about this because I do get this email quite often, this question quite often um, in regards to what are my gifts and how should I be utilizing those gifts? Now, this may resonate with you all. If it doesn't, then you can always uh, book a personal reading from me. Uh, but it, again, it's a general reading. So we're just going to go get right into it and see um, what are your gifts right now? What gifts are awakening? What gifts... Do you have that might be dormant, that have the potential to awaken? Um, I definitely feel like these gifts can definitely lead you towards your abundance. Of course, anytime you're operating in your natural state, in your organic state, and in your creativity, that's when you attract abundance to you. And so that initial dream that I had about swimming in the money, it was like this energy of the more that I purify myself, um, the more I am able to attract abundance. There is no lack mentality. There is no scarcity mindset. Like um, I'm able to attract. And so I don't fear taking losses. I'm more concerned about purification and making sure that what I attract to me is a direct reflection of me. And so the currency that I possess must also be coming from a pure energy if that's what I'm projecting out into the universe. That's what I picked up on from the initial dream, okay? If any of you all are wondering about that. And so also consider that the powers that were, which I feel represented the disgruntled European, you know, not saying that all Europeans are, you know, wicked, okay? But the disgruntled European in the dream, I feel represented the powers that were who do not want to televise or broadcast or announce that we are awakening, okay? And that our gifts are beginning to awaken or even that they're aware of the fact that we possess these gifts, but their biggest concern was to ensure that most of the world did not understand the gifts that we possessed. And so they wanna keep that on a hush, okay? And so... um you know, for so many people to be surrounding me at that time when I was levitating in the air and sun gazing and to be watching and taking photos and trying to, you know, call on the attention of the media to come in and see it. It just lets me know that the chosen, you and I, we're starting to be noticed. Like the world is beginning to see us. Our light is shining so bright that it can't be missed. And our gifts are becoming more heightened and powerful, okay? So, wow, that flew way over there. Let me see. Um, so the first card I have coming out, look at this. It says teacher, okay? So many of you are teachers. It says your words have the power to heal, making you a source of light for the wounded that come to you for your guidance and wisdom to give them strength and direction. So you are not only a teacher, but you are a natural healer and people come to you to, re to receive your advice. You might find that this has been a common theme for you all of your life, okay? Where people come to you and just you lending an ear or you giving them your sound, your, your wisdom, you know, giving them your jewels of wisdom has been a source of light for the wounded, okay? So these are people that are hurt, that are going through things that come to you. Um, because they admire your strength and they uh, respect the direction that you give them, the guidance that you give them. Excuse me. So I'm going to clarify teacher with my other deck. Hmm. Interesting. So what came out is schizophrenia. This could indicate that the people that you attract to you might be in mental shambles. They might have 
a lot of misdirected thoughts. They might um, be very unbalanced when they come to you. And there's something about your energy that just gives them that guidance, that gives them the courage to release and to let go and to take a leap of faith into the unknown. Um, I feel like you have the eyes to see something that many of these people are not able to see. You see something into, uh, like you're able to look at a person and see into their childhood wounds. I feel like that's how deep your spiritual vision goes. You're able to see into their childhood wounds. You're able to pinpoint what is causing the mental disruption and you're able to give them guidance from there. Let me clarify teacher again. Okay, so look at that. I have inner voice, which represents the high priestess. So you have strong intuitive gifts, which allows you to um, understand the mysteries of the universe, um, to be able to hear those divine messages that are coming through, to be receptive to what's happening in the spiritual realm, the spiritual nature of a person. You're able to tap into that well beyond the physical realm. You're able to see something uh, on a much deeper scale. And then I have the miser. You know, um, I feel like for many of you, you might even withhold these gifts. Like you have a lot more to offer than what you are actually given to the world. It could be out of fear. It could be It could be anything. Um, it could be out of fear that the wisdom that you possess is too otherworldly. It's too outside of the norm when it comes to what people expect or their own personal spiritual experience. I feel like the wisdom that you possess, maybe you hold on to it or you withhold it the majority of these jewels that you possess out of fear that others might see you as being crazy. Um, but I feel that you're definitely being called to bring these gifts to the world. Okay. So let me see, I'm going to pull another card to see what other gifts you possess here. The number two is also standing out with those cards. You're definitely able to bring balance into people's lives here. So I have two cards that came out. I have knowing. So you have a natural gift of knowing, which is in alignment with the high priestess card here. So it says you have the ability to connect on a deeper level with people and talk in ways they feel heard. Being able to penetrate their veil often leaves people feeling vulnerable. So you just have a natural knowing of what's happening with people on a deeper level. And because you know these things naturally, it does put them in a space of feeling very vulnerable. And so you might find that you withhold some of these uh, jewels of wisdom that you possess out of, you know, fear of judgment or not wanting to, you know, step on anybody's toes because you're able to see past even their representative. And that can be intimidating for others, especially when they feel like who they're presenting to you, you see past that, you see through that. That can be scary for someone who relies on their representative when it comes to how they operate and how they navigate through life and deal with people. And so leaving people feeling vulnerable, it might have caused some disruption in the past when you actually used those gifts and, and, and spoke the truth that you was able to see. Um, and so as, as a result, you might have became the miser withholding a lot of your jewels because of you know, maybe others' opinions and saying, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or you're crazy, but they're only projecting that energy off onto you because they recognize that you've tapped into something that they did not want you to be able to see, that they thought they were hiding very well. So you have a natural gift of knowing. Uh, I do have here catalysts. You're someone that evokes progress and change in people, making them aware that something could be better leaving them forever changed, okay? So there's the butterfly right there. It's like the words that come from your mouth uh, is transformative, okay? They are they have the ability to transform a person on a, on a spiritual level, okay? And 
not just what comes from your mouth because the mouth in this card is actually covered it's what comes through your energy through your inner knowing it's like just the energy that you project is a catalyst for others to move towards it evokes progress and change in people making them aware of something that could be better okay so showing them it's like you're a mirror you hold up a mirror to people even if you're not trying to do it it's something about your energy that is a catalyst that holds up a mirror to people that pushes them into their transformation and i feel that for those of you who do openly communicate what you see and feel through your knowing and through your intuitive gifts, this is also very transformative and it makes people have to face, um, it makes people have to face their demons um, and to have to heal from that. So let me clarify catalyst. So I have going with the flow. Let me clarify catalyst. politics. You see that? So it's like, it could even be that you're a catalyst in a way where you don't have to say much of anything. It's just naturally your energy of just going with the flow of life, being carefree, being relaxed, and just allowing whatever changes is going to transpire, transpire in your life. You just, you don't resist them. You go with the flow. Okay. You embrace the changes. You flow with it. And it has a tendency to reveal those who play politics. It's like, like I said, people bring forth their representative a lot of the times and you having this inner sense of knowing this natural ability of knowing and seeing past the illusion, seeing past the mask and seeing through to the core of who these people are is very transformative just off the strength that you project this energy of just being carefree, going with the flow of life, very authentic to who you are because this person that's swimming is naked um, and very transparent. Without even saying anything, it becomes this catalyst to others who wear a mask. It becomes this catalyst to others who only offer their representative to the world. It, it makes them want to change spiritually and to take the mask off and to really take a look at what's behind that mask. And to have to face themselves if they're operating from a space of, you know, with a lack of integrity or, you know, from their carnal nature or whatnot, it makes them have to take a good look at that. And so you hold that mirror up to them even without saying anything. It's just your energy. So that is, you know, it can be very intimidating and leave people in a vulnerable state, but that's who you are. So let me see. What other gifts do you naturally possess? So you have here the demolisher. So this says you have the ability to step out of the past and let go of old energies to step into the new with ease. You thrive on change. Isn't that what I just said as far as going with the flow? You know, you go with the flow of things naturally. And so whatever changes happen around you, you don't resist them. You don't push back. You just kind of flow with it. You know, whatever the transformation looks like for you, you know, you allow yourself to shed that skin and you step out of the old energy with ease and step right into the new and you thrive on this change. You don't get into survival mode. You don't go into fear. You know, you just go with the flow. And because of this, it has the ability to, um, you know, create this catalyst of change for others who are not in that um, energy. So let me see, what other gifts do you have here? What other gifts do you all possess? So I have here Dream Girl. Um, you have many options in love and that puts you in a place of power. Uh, you're their dream girl, the ultimate prize to win. So of course, this could be dream guy, dream girl. It's that energy of... I feel for this car specifically because I see all these stars around her, you know, her face or whatnot. I feel like you have star potential. You know, um, many of you, you might even say, well, I'm a star seed. It's this, you know, you have that divine connection, that universal connection. 
and people see this. Um, and I feel like it draws people to you. You end up being that, that thing, that it factor, you have that it factor. Okay. And so it, it puts you in a position where you have many options. I don't feel like it's just in love. I feel like it's also when it comes to your gifts, your talents, the things that you could actually do and actually be uh, very successful at things that you can thrive at. Um, and so I do feel that that is a very strong gift that you possess as well. Let's see. You have here hope. You offer the most valuable gift there is, hope. Through your optimism and support, you inspire hope in others, okay? So that's very valuable to be able to enhance and increase other people's faith and their hope for their own personal future. I feel like people look at you and they just admire your, just that natural, I don't know, it's something about you that's just naturally authentic. It's just, you're just natural. You're, you're not trying to be anything outside of who you are. And you, I feel like you don't allow yourself to stay stuck in any specific, um, belief system or expectations of others. Like you're, you're always shedding your skin. You're always transforming. You're always changing, but it's a very natural change. It's like, it happens naturally. You're not forcing it. You're not pushing it. It, it's just, it comes easily for you. And so, yeah, this natural ability to step out of the past and to step into the new with ease, you thrive on change. So you don't feel the need to wear a mask. Um, and so because of this, this gives other people hope that, you know, whatever it is that they're going through, they have the potential to, to, you know, get through it and to overcome it and to thrive just like you've come to that point. Um, and so you're very inspiring to others. I see that. So let me clarify what is, first I want to clarify dream girl with this deck. Having many options, dream girl. Yeah. See, this is what I was telling y'all existence. It's like you have this natural connection to the stars. So, you know, this person, they're completely nude and, you know, they're sitting on this plant, which shows that you're grounded, you're connected to nature because that's what this card represents. You know, you're very connected to nature and all that is, but as above, so below. You're connected to Mother Earth, you're connected to nature, you know, the cosmos. And this is that dream girl energy where you know, people are just naturally drawn to you. You're the ultimate prize because you are, um, you're just, you're just different. It's like otherworldly type of energy. You're not of this world. You know, you're, you're just unique. You know, you find pleasure in what other people would consider to be the ordinary, but you're far from ordinary. You're actually very, you know, extraordinary and that's what um, draws people to you because it doesn't take a whole lot is what I'm feeling. It, you don't have to do much to stand out, but you just naturally do because you are, you're just different and you're okay with that. Um, so in terms of this hope card, let me clarify hope. You inspire others. You do increase their faith. You give them hope in spite of their circumstances. What is hope? Hope is, look at that, hope is courage. You give them the courage to be different. You give them the courage to stand out from the crowd. You know, flowers don't generally grow through cracks. So this is that, you know, um, you offer the most valuable gift there is, hope. Through your optimism and support, you inspire hope in others. And so that hope that, yes, you, you can thrive, you can stand out, you can be different, you can go through very dark and hard places and still come through shining and being very unique in your energy. And so giving people, it's like you increase people's ability to step into their own strength, their own personal power, that solar plexus energy is what I'm picking up on here. And to just thrive um, and to move towards things um, from a totally different energy. And so y'all possess some very powerful gifts out there and you want to really tap in. Like the more that you... Um, do the work to become the most authentic version of yourself, the more organic you are to 
um, who you've been created to be. And you come out of this energy of fear that others might, you know, be intimidated by your knowing or intimidated by your ability to tap into something deeper. You just allow yourself to just be. You're going to find that these gifts are going to be used in a way where you're able to not only help yourself, but help many other people. Uh, a lot of you are already using these gifts. So let me see what other gifts do you all possess here? So you have royalty, okay? Royalty. I feel like it's something about your bloodline that is very royal. It says you have royal you have royalty qualities that command power and causes extreme reactions. You you're either loved or hated, challenging them to become better. So remember I said some people might not like the fact that you're that you have this inner knowing that you have this ability to be that catalyst that pushes them towards their own transformation and makes them come from behind that representative to bear all because you already see who they are even past what they try to present to you. That puts a person in a very vulnerable space. And so some people might love it and then you find that many people might hate it. But in spite of that, that's who you are. And so you don't want to dim your light or try to hide your gifts because some people may not react to it very well, you know, um, but your royalty, this is that royal bloodline here. Um, and so I feel like many of you have a strong potential to activate that dormant DNA and to awaken those Akashic records and those natural gifts that have been inherently passed down from one generation to the next. Um, but many of the, and you know, your ancestors did not utilize these gifts due to conditioning of society and fear that if they were to do something outside of what others expected them to do or believe in or to practice, then they would be ostracized or, you know, create, you know, made to become the black sheep. So many of them suppressed these gifts and it still got passed down throughout your DNA you know, from one generation to the next, but it stayed suppressed for a, a long period of time, you know, from one generation to the next. And so it feels like you stepping into your authentic nature and doing the work to heal and awakening your spiritual gifts is you breaking that generational cycle and being bold enough and courageous enough to be different. Okay. So that royalty, that royal blood runs through your veins here. Um, and there's, you know, it shows that you're not afraid to show it. You're not afraid to bear all because royalty is here. Now, I do see this is standing out at the bottom of the deck. I do have divineer. Okay. Some of you are um, very good at reading energy, whether you read the energy through cards or you read the energy through other symbols and messages that come through. Um, it says you have a natural talent for divination, revealing what is hidden or hear answers or hear answers that may come in many different forms to help point you in the right path. So some of you can hear the messages intuitively and you're able to give guidance based on that. Others of you use uh, tools such as what I'm using right now to help pick up on the energy and you interpret it from there. Okay, but either way, you have a strong gift of using divination to get the answers and the guidance that you need to help yourself and to help others. Okay. So let me clarify, um, royalty first. What is royalty? Look at that. Royalty is sharing. So, you know, you can look at this person in this picture and see that she is, you know, even her garment, it exemplifies royalty. It exemplifies wealth and abundance. And all around her is these sunflowers, you know, um, exemplifying that energy of courage and confidence and beauty. And, um, you know, I, with this light here, the pomegranate, the grapes, is like you have more than enough to give yourself and more than enough to give others. It is inheritantly yours. You know, that um, that bloodline, that royal bloodline, it is inheritantly yours to have infinite abundance, wisdom, knowledge, understanding you know, and all of these things. And so you're able to share this with others because you have an overflow um, because it, it runs through your bloodline here. So let me see, what is divineer? So 
So I have two cards that came out for Divineer. I have the Creator. So you're able to use that energy of tapping in, you know, whether you're hearing the messages or using visual aids and tools to help you to pick up on what's happening energetically to actually help to bring balance uh, into the world here, okay? You are a part of the body of a, of a greater whole that's here to bring these messages to the world, okay? And to enlighten others and to bring balance and peace through your gifts. And so I do see you using that. And also at the bottom of the deck, yeah, that's that's in alignment with the divineer because that's the rebel energy. That's stepping out of there. That's breaking that chain and being the rebel, doing something that is against, you know, that works against what society tells you is right versus wrong. You know, what religion tells you what is right versus wrong, breaking that chain and being the rebel and moving passionately towards what you know is going to actually help others, okay? And you create through this energy. You use this energy of being able to tap in, um, utilizing, like I said, whether it's cards or whatever you hear intuitively in order to create, in order to be a co-creator of your existence and to show others how to join you in doing the same. And so you use it from a space of honor and integrity here. So let me see, I'll pull a few more cards to see, and then I'm going to look into how you can use these gifts in your current circumstances to help enhance or to help propel you forward. So let me see, I'll pull three more in terms of your gifts. So I have self-love. You advocate a healthy lifestyle, taking good care of your body, mind, spirit your body, mind, and spirit, teaching others to give love back to themselves. So you advocate for a good health. Some of you might have a very strict diet. Um, some of you may advocate for using herbs and tinctures and, you know, for natural remedies. Um, some of you advocate for working out and keeping your body healthy and strong and taking good care of your skin, using natural products, you know, um, and being as natural and authentic as possible, taking salt baths, teaching people how to nurture themselves, how to care for themselves. And so because you do this for yourself, that's you naturally advocating for it, even if you're not going out necessarily telling everybody, well, this is what you should do. This is what you should do. But I feel like for a lot of you, you do share. You share what you do because some people might ask, well, what are you doing for your skin? What are you doing for your hair? How do you um, maintain a certain appearance or this energy, you know, this certain energy or whatnot? And it's all because that self-love, it shows through your appearance. And so naturally people are drawn to ask questions, you know, what can I do to enhance or to, um, to heal this area or that area? And so I feel like you advocating for a healthy lifestyle is also another way that you that you share your wisdom and you teach others, okay? Um, so let me see what else is coming out here. So you have healing hands. Many of you are able to use your hands to heal people, okay? You can lay hands on people and, you know, pretty much set your intentions, pray to the most high and call them on your spiritual team. Naturally, your hands are very healing. And so it says... You are able to use universal energy with your hands to help people alleviate spiritual, physical, or mental suffering and clear energetic blockages. So many of you will be great at doing things such as Reiki, massage therapy, um, anything that allows you to use your hands to heal people's bodies. Um, whether it's on a spiritual level or physical level or a mental level, some of you are able to touch a person's head and to help alleviate headaches or to alleviate mental clutter. You know, uh, you can give hugs and just the energy of just holding someone is very healing to them or holding someone's hand. Y'all have very powerful gifts in your hands, okay? Um, and so that's another gift that you naturally possess. Let me pull one more. This is why you want to make sure that your energy is in alignment because when you have the types of, when you have this type of ability, your hands, that means that the energy that you project is going to come through your hands. And when you look at your hands, you have all of these energetic centers, you know, it's what I like to call them, these spirals of energy, um, which people call like your fingerprints or even, you know, like your palm prints, that's all energy. And so when you're using your hands to heal others, 
that's energy that's being projected from within you to them. And so this is why you want to keep your self light. You want to keep your energy balanced because, you know, you're able to use that gift to help project it over onto others when using the, um, the gift of touch. Okay. And so you keep yourself balanced so that you don't feel depleted when you're around others who need that healing energy. Okay. Um, so let me see one more. Okay, well, I have two that came out. So I'll take these and I'll, I'll be done with this part. So it says mystical. Something very mystical about you, which gives people imp the impression that you're very much in your power and you are. So you're very mysterious, okay? Very mystical energy, you know, very different. Um, people look at you and they're like, what, what's behind that? You know, who, who is that person? They're very curious um, about you because you come off as being very, uh, mysterious. And so, um, it gives people the impression that you are very powerful. So you can walk into a room and people are like, well, who is that? And I, they can feel the energy of power and strength that you're exuding just through your presence there, but they're not able to quite tap into where it's coming from or, or who you are. But that's the beauty of it all, you know, um, but at the same time, you're very authentic. You're not trying to be something that you're not. This is just naturally who you, uh, who you are. And then the last card I have here is the dead. Okay. Some of you have the ability. It says you can communicate with the dead. It could be in the form of inner sensing, seeing, or hearing. So you can either feel their energy. You can literally, some of you can actually see the images then others of you are able to hear. Like if they're speaking to you or they're trying to bring a message through to you, you're able to hear. So you have a strong ability to be able to connect with those who have transitioned over into the spiritual realm. Keeping in mind though, because some people get so afraid of that, um, you, we are spirits having a human experience. And so we are both spirit and flesh. And so to be able to connect with those who are in the spiritual realm without the physical vessel, it just means that you're more tapped into the spiritual nature of who you are and you're not completely just submerged in the physical. And so, you know, it's not something that you want to be afraid of. You should never fear a spirit largely because you are a spirit. You see what I'm saying? And so, you have that ability. Many of you have that gift. And if it's something that you fear, you want to make sure that you establish your authority. You create healthy boundaries with those who are trying to connect with you in the spiritual realm to let them know, like, you know, if there's a certain energy, I do, I'm not a welcoming it into my space. If there is, you know, um, you know, you, you establish those boundaries just like you would in the physical realm. But again, you're a spirit having a human experience. So as a human, you're not going to let nobody just walk up in your house and start, you know, talking and telling you all their business. You're going to set those boundaries and say, well, you need to call me first. You need to ask me if it's okay. So you do the same thing in the spiritual realm. If you find that these gifts are very strong and it's something that you might have, you know, been fearful of, especially if you've been tapped into this since childhood. You know, a lot of people like to say, you know, it's always a demonic source, you know, but that's not the case. You know, you have, like I said, we are spirits having a human experience. So how can a spirit be demonic? You know, it can't always be the case. There's a polarity to everything. Okay. So you establish those healthy boundaries for yourself in the spiritual realm if you know that you possess this particular gift and you find that it's overwhelming to you or that it scares you from your spiritual nature. Um, and so that's what I'm seeing. So let me pull some cards really quickly just to see how these gifts might, how might you be able to utilize these gifts currently. So with the teacher card, we're going to see with a teacher, how can you use that gift right now? in your physical existence in the 3d with teacher that's too many let me see i want one card at a time with teacher look at that wow okay i guess i'm gonna have to take three so i have the high priestess coming out which is quite you know interesting because when i clarified this teacher card earlier that's exactly what came out with my other deck, which is the high priestess here 
this one just to say it says inner voice, but it is the high priestess card, okay? So how you can utilize this gift in your physical realm, all of these have like that crescent moon here. This child has it here on the forehead. It's here on this card. It's here on this card. So how you can use it in your physical is many of you are natural high priestess. You are here to teach others and to bring your intuitive wisdom through. You are channelers. You're able to pick up on the messages that the most high and your spiritual team has given to you to give to others. And so many of you want to use that in the physical realm to do things similar to what I'm doing right now. So you might have this creative spark, this idea of how you can utilize these gifts as the high priestess to help teach others, okay? And it's going to bring you a lot of abundance, okay? It's going to put you in this place of independence. And so really consider that. If you find that you're drawn to it and you know that you have a natural gift, you're just not quite sure how that might fit or if it might be lucrative, you know, in terms of abundance. Yes, when you step into your natural calling, because like I said, this is three times here, high priestess, one, two, three. There's, that's undeniable, okay? Three times is a confirmation right there, okay? And it's really interesting too because you have the two heads here, two heads here. You're able to tap into the inner child of others, okay? You're able to naturally do that using your intuitive gifts. So some of you might work with the youth using these gifts um, and others of you, you might work with adults, but whoever you're working with, you might work with both. It's going to be very lucrative because it's, it's going to be something that you're very passionate about. It's going to allow you to have that independence and freedom. And um, yeah, so don't, don't discount your gifts right there because I see strong potential of abundance moving ahead. So then the next one I have is knowing. Let's clarify this card of knowing. Look at that. It's being offered to you. That's at the bottom of the deck. So some of you, you know that this is being offered to you, but you might not you might be holding back with the miser here because there's a fear that others may not receive these intuitive, this intuitive uh, gift that you have well. They might think you're crazy. You know, they might try to shut you down because they're now feeling vulnerable in your presence because you have this sense of knowing, but you don't, you don't stop that. You don't stop your, your calling for the sake of coddling someone else's insecurities. You just step into your purpose because people admire your ability to do that. They admire you being the rebel. And because of that, you become the catalyst that pushes them to become the most authentic version of themselves. So don't hold yourself back. Don't let them be the catalyst that keeps you stuck. You become the catalyst that propels them forward. So then you have knowing here, uh, clarifying, knowing, same, wow, actually that's three times. Same energy three times, no, four times. Because you have here, y'all better step into your calling. If for, for those of you that's questioning whether or not you should do something similar to what I do or whatever creative idea you have in terms of using your intuitive gifts, move on it, okay? You have same thing here, crescent moon, inner knowing, same thing here, moon, inner knowing, that divine connection, the, the moon, inner knowing, and then right here, four times. So you have, y'all have some very powerful gifts of knowing. And if you, like I said, move on it, okay? So let me clarify knowing again. Okay, this is something that you want to build. You're going to be able to build here with this, okay? Something that people will be able to see. Um, you, Some of you may end up working with others to do this, to create whatever this um, this is. But you're definitely, look, you're being called to take action and to boss, step into boss mode. The emperor takes action and moves towards it successfully, okay? You are taking the will of your life and moving on your gifts and moving on your ability. Like this is, um, the emperor is usually an entrepreneur. An emperor, the emperor creates his own empire. And so some of you are masculines, men who are being called to step into your gift tapping into that that feminine energy which we all possess masculine and feminine energy but not, no longer hiding your gifts because I feel like a lot of men tend to hide their gifts out of fear of judgment many of you it's time for you to step into your calling as like high priest as well as the females not just the men but the females as well need to tap in 
and start bringing forth their gift as high priestess, okay? Take charge because you're going to move forward successfully. Things are going to take off for you very um, strongly here when you do step into this gift. So let me just, I'm going to fast forward here and move to the catalyst card just to see how you can use that in your daily. And then I think I'm going to close out because... Um, I don't want to, you know, it's already almost an hour. What is catalyst here? Catalyst. How can you use that in your daily life? Look at that. The catalyst is go ahead and take advantage of that opportunity that's being handed to you because it's back again. So this is you being the catalyst, the way that you're going to actually catapult others towards, what does this catalyst card say? You're someone that evokes progress and change in people making them aware that something could be better, leaving them forever changed. With this three of wands, this is looking out on the horizon, anticipating the greatest outcome, anticipating uh, taking sail, okay? And moving towards your heart's desires, creating that solid foundation, taking advantage of that passionate idea, you know, stepping out there to do something different, no longer being concerned about conditioning or other people's opinions, but being optimistic about stepping into your purpose and your calling. This is what you're looking at. This is what you're facing. This is what you're desiring to go after. So you taking advantage of the gift and the opportunity. This is the Ace of Pentacles. This is something that continues to grow and grow and grow. So this is a seed that gets planted and the harvest is plentiful when you have the Ace of Pentacles. So taking advantage of it, moving towards it, you become the catalyst to encourage others to move towards their gifts and their purpose and their calling, okay? So I'm gonna take one more card and I'm gonna close out the Seven of Wands. You know, I feel like this is you protecting your energy. This is you being protected also. You're not just protecting your energy, but you are also divinely protected. This is you. The solar plexus is illuminated here. So this is you being courageous, bold, and confident. And in spite of opposition, you're standing your ground. You're standing on what you believe in. You're not allowing anyone to come in and penetrate your that divine bubble of protection that you have created around yourself spiritually and physically. And so... Because of this, people respect you standing in your position and not being moved in spite of their opposing uh, opinions or whatnot. You stand in your power. You stand out. You boldly stand out. Take charge of your life because many of you are going to gain a lot of financial abundance as a result of taking advantage of this Ace of Wands and Ace of Pentacles. This is a brand new idea. This is a new creative idea. The Ace of Wands and Ace of Pentacles is always something new that's being handed to you by the Most High. It's being gifted to you. And it's naturally there for many of you. It's just a matter of awakening it and, and taking advantage of it and moving towards it passionately, passionately um, taking charge of your life, taking back your authority, stepping into boss mode, emperor mode. This will allow many of you to be entrepreneurs and to be very comfortable because he's seated comfortably in that energy and being able to create a harvest, planting seeds that's going to be very uh, plentiful because you're going to be changing the world here. You will be changing the world and you will be joining hands and forces with those who have stepped into their divine calling to bring balance and healing into the universe. And so you will definitely be in the rebel energy, breaking those chains, breaking generational curses, allowing yourself to embrace the gifts that have been naturally passed down to you through your lineage because you are royalty, okay? And you are um, demolishing, closing out, you know, shedding that skin and allowing yourself to become brand new. And because of this, people admire that. And many of you will be reading, you, you'll be reading cards, you'll be reading energy. These are the types of things that you're being drawn and called to do. And you're also, some of you will be herbalists. Some of you will create natural products for the skin, for the hair, you know, uh, whether it's food, different meals, you know, you're going to be doing things to help to show people how to enhance their own self-love and self-care. Some of you will be using your spiritual gifts to speak with those who have crossed over. Um, and it's just some of you will be using your hands to heal others. You'll be Reiki masters. You'll be, you know, massage therapists. You'll be um, doing different things to heal people through the energy of touch because you have that ability to heal with your hands. Some of you will be cooks. You'll be mixing it up and cooking it up, you know, giving people healthy meals to enhance their, 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 their health or whatnot. 
And so it's so many different things that I see y'all doing, but all of these things are definitely spiritual. And this is you stepping into your purpose. And so congratulations to those of you who have been bold enough and courageous enough to stand out and to be different. Okay. So I love you all. Thank you all for joining me. Please be sure to like and subscribe. If you desire a private uh, reading, be sure to email me. If you want to donate to my channel, you can check the description box. I love you and I will talk to you all next time.